My name is Marta Lovcevic and I'm a head gardener at the Bobby King Conservatory. Conservatory opened like the whole Barbican Centre in 1984. Well, they actually really, the whole idea of uh, building the centre and the conservatory in here came into uh, late 50s. Um, so, as you probably know, the City of London, this part of the City of London, was heavily bombed during the Second World War. City of London Corporation came up with the idea to build something new, something exciting, and they released um, almost like a competition for architects um, and um, yeah lots of architects apply and three of them won it was Mr Chamberwell, Powell and Bon and they were giving uh, the task of designing the Barbican estate uh, which surrounds us in the Barbican centre and obviously uh, the conservatory itself. Lots of plants that we have been donated from uh, late 70s and that was coming from donations from various places, from friends in the trade, um, from nurseries and things like that. So they were all held in the West Ham Park nurseries who suddenly, uh, sadly don't exist anymore. And until the building and the, all the architecture work was finished, uh, they were held there. In the late 70s, uh, 78, 79, they were brought here into the conservatory. And since then they are growing, um, growing in here. So. All the big trees that you see around the conservatory, they are the original trees. Lots of our monsteras, um, they are the original monsteras that were planted in here. So some of them are 40, if not more years old, uh, because we just had our 40th birthday as a, as a centre in March. But as I said, the, the plants predated. So they didn't come as a small sapling as well. They were a few years old. So we can say easily some of them are 50, uh, 50 plus. In terms of care, it's, it's difficult to say because um, we are the glass house of the conservatory, so we don't rely on the natural conditions, we only rely on light, but everything else, we don't have rain because we've got a roof above our heads, so they need constant tending and constant maintenance. They can be in some form left to their own devices, so they don't need, um, you know, we prune the trees just once a year or some shrubs once a year, maybe twice a year, but they do need wa regular watering and feeding and, um, you know, checking for any pests and diseases. So it's a, it's a mix. Uh, I would say sometimes they can be left to their own devices. Sometimes they have to be looked after, uh, especially if they are uh, smaller plants or seedlings that we grow in here. They do need a constant care then. So behind me all, Actually, above me is the Monstera Deliciosa, so Swiss cheese plant. Um, and you can see actually how your little saplings will grow, so they will reach their full, full potential in the good conditions really, really quickly. So be careful if they have, you have them in your uh, living room, because we don't want any more, <laughs> so we won't be taking your donations in here. And also, you'll be maybe interesting to know that the person who discovered this uh, in Mexico called this a Swiss cheese plant because the leaves, the fenestration in the leaves looks like a Swiss cheese holes. So this is um, Araucaria heterophylla. Uh, so it's called commonly Norfolk Island uh, pine and it's the only conifer um, in our collection. Very often members of the public refer it to as a Christmas tree because you, you can see it looks a little bit like a Christmas tree and it's endemic to, as a uh, common name says, Norfolk Island.
So the trees behind me, they're called Ficus benjaminus, and if you've been around in the 80s and 90s, you can probably recognize them as a staple household plant. Uh, they've been growing here since the beginning, um, and yeah, you can still buy them on the market. They are sometimes very fussy. They like to shed the leaves wherever you move them, so be careful around them. But as you can see, they are growing in here happily to their mature uh, sizes. So above me, you can see the flowering uh, bougainvilleas. So you can probably recognize them if you travel to France, south of France, Italy, Spain, they grow all over the houses. We grow them indoors in here, but as I said before, sometimes in the southeast of England, you can grow them outdoors as a climber. Be careful though, because they're very, very thorny. What do you maybe don't know that the pink um, stuff is actually not the petals, but the bracts. So what you can see in here, they, they, the pink, um, what looks like a petals are the, bract, the actual bracts, so the colorful leaves of the plant. The, the true uh, flowers from the botanical point of view, they are the white, three white flowers inside. So you can see they are completely different. Well, sometimes uh, people refer it to as a flower, but this is actually a bract. So similar to your poncetias, uh, the red leaves will be bracts and the true flower will be inside of it. So I've, to be honest, I've been asked uh, that question very, very often, what's my favorite plant? And because we have so many species around here, it's very, very difficult to choose the favorite plant and say why, because each of those plants are weird and wonderful um, in a different way. And very often um, during the season, they will be very, very insignificant. But if they flower, for example, the cacti will flower once a year and you go into a red house and you are mesmerized by the colors and the size of the flowers that some of them will produce. So it's very, very difficult for me to pinpoint one, one specific plant. So the kind of plants that we grow here in the conservatory, they are uh, what we call plants coming from a temperate climate. So they will be, to explain it easier, they will be the plants that you have at your house. So they will be your household plants, just grown to the size of the space basically, and the time and obviously the years. So if you have your little Benjamina or your little Monstera and you bought it as a little sapling, you come in here and you suddenly realize uh, it can uh, slower or quicker sometimes uh, overtake your household, basically. I would say 90, 95% of the plants that we have in here, uh, you can grow at your home. As I said before, they are basically your overgrown house plants. Uh, and very often people will say, oh, I grow it at home, or I do have it in my living room, I have it in, the, uh, in my um, conservatory or glass house, little glass house. And they do recognize uh, those plants. So what is good, as I said, you can take that inspiration from majority of those plants. Some of them will do even fantastically um, in your gardens, if you uh, live London south, southeast, southwest, when you have sort of milder climates, or you're up the north, but you know you've got a sheltered garden, you can some of them you can grow even outside, uh, which will be good. The only problem is sometimes the plants are rare or came, they came out of the fashion, so they are not so easy to find uh, on the main street market. So that will be your main hurdle to trying to replicate uh, the space at your home. So for the beginners, you've got your uh, classics, you've got your Monstera, which is um, everyone a few years back fell in love and everyone seems to have Monstera at home, including me. Um, you've got your Aspidistria, so iron cast plant. It's called iron cast because you can't kill it. Uh, you've got your philodendrons, you got your uh, spider plants, so chlorophytum. 
So those very, very classic, it's almost like back to the 80s or 90s where you imagine the households, but they are the plants that are very, very easy um, and you almost cannot kill, well you can kill any plant at any point, but they are very, very difficult to uh, to do. You've got your also your syngoniums, you've got some palms like arecas. There are many, many plants that you can take from here and, and grow it at home. So the hardiest ones of all of them will be probably aspidistras. You can put them in the shadiest, darkest corner. You can forget to water them. You can sometimes overwater them, but they will survive everything and anything. Lots of people don't realize that they flower, uh, but they do. And on the bottom, uh, so they will flower, not like your classic plant. You can imagine the, the, camp, uh, the, the flower will come from a stem, the uh, flower will come from a soil directly and it will lay on the soil and it looks like a um, brown crown. So very, very often people give it a miss because it's among the leaves and don't realize it's there. But it's absolutely fantastic plant to put in a dark dark living room or bathroom, wherever you can imagine.